Hello and welcome to this Isomsurf basic tutorial number three, working with curves. So we're going to start this tutorial with a very basic two-point curve. You can access the two-point create from the blue portion of the, uh, of the menu. And there it is, two points. We can also access it from our mouse menu by pressing the space bar and the left mouse button. And there it is, two points. So I'm going to go ahead and pick two-point curve creation. You'll see here is the order, so I'm going to go for an order two, a simple curve. I'm just going to pick two points. So I'm going to snap to the curve to the edge, do it again, curve to the edge. Now at the moment we have free space, but I'm snapping to geometric objects. I can also snap to plane points. So I'm picking the W key to go WW to pick on the working plane. Let's now make an order four curve. So let's go from this curve to another curve over here. And now you can see it's got four control points. Now I can go directly into the modify command right here, modify control points, and then I can work on these control points directly. So that leads us into control point modification, the most important way for controlling the shape of our curves and our surfaces. So let me just make a detail list. I'll pick the curve so that we can work on it undistracted. So I'm going to go for the control point. And you see here it's also available from the menu in modify curve segment control point. Let's start with a tangent lock. So this means that I can move a control point down its tangent line and you just pick to the one side or the other to define which direction you want to move it. Now, normal movement casts a normal from the control point to the curve and it will slide the control point up and down that normal. The third option is offset. So here you can see we have all the control points are offsetting together. Now moving over to our shape locks. So here I've locked the tangent G1 lock and you'll see that the tangent line is always the same. The relationship between the first and second control points defines the tangent vector and that is, uh, that is locked. Going for a curvature lock now, the curvature of the curve is going to be maintained at the end point here. So when I move it, you'll see that the second and first control points are adjusting to keep the curvature continuous at the end point. And we also have the torsion option available to us to lock uh, for torsion. But let's come over here and look at the order. So here I've made it an order six and I can quite easily change it to an order three just by pressing the three on my keypad. So we can choose any of the numbers. This, uh, this number over here, the 32.39, that is the deviation that the curve moved going from a six to a three. So obviously with fewer control points, it can't quite fit the same shape. But going back to a six again, you'll see it's zero and then going down to a five, it's still maintaining that zero deviation. So there, I was also using the plus and minus on my keypad to put the order up and down one point. Now coming across to the global locks, so you see we've got this X, Y, Z column right here. The, if there's a tick in the box, it means it cannot move in that direction. So leaving Z free means that the control point can only move in Z according to the global coordinate system in the top left corner of the screen here. So I'm just gonna move that around and let's change our reference to the plane so we can refer to the global coordinate system and also the plane coordinate system you can see it says depth there so depth responds to the z vector on the plane so i've locked y and depth so i can only move in the x direction of the local plane okay moving over to the next idea we're going to create some iso curves so iso curves are the curves that can be uh, pulled out of a bezier patch so here we have it on multiple so it's made six curves Curves. So to switch off multiple, this will allow us to make just one ISO curve, shown here in pale blue as a preview, and then it constructs a curve through the Bezier patch. So I can put it back onto multiple, I can choose my number, so here we have six. Let me change that to eight. We can also then flip the U and V directions. Every patch has a U direction and a V direction. In fact, an ISO curve is uh, either all U or all V at a certain location. Moving over now to the styling corner, I'm going to go to a list 
that is prepared. So we have the classic radius, so a true radius um, arc between two curves. So I can just pick these two and uh, press OK, and it generates that arc for us. So it's very, very small. Let me make that bigger. You'll see the radius is dynamically changing in the dialog box. So this is a true arc. We can, of course, type in the number that we want. Press OK, and then the system will adjust it. We also have a chord length option. So this is the distance between the endpoints of the arc in a straight line. So you can choose to have a blend or a shape option. So blend is just a blend curve. Shape gives us a little bit more control. So I can pick that and slide it around dynamically. And I can also choose the transition that I want. So I'm going to change this to curvature and then position over here. So that, those relationships are maintained, and I can choose exactly which one I want. So if we go for curvature, curvature, and we are, so we have a, a G2 curve. I can also choose to trim the, the references, so that automatically trims them back. That gives me the ability to dynamically make a shape on the screen and get a clear view of what it will look like. So another type of curve we can make is an arc. We mentioned it briefly before, but here you can just choose from this menu of options. So you just specify a center point. You can also do one which is uh, put an arc through three points. So I'm picking W points for my plane points. One, two, and three, plane point. There we are. The nice thing about arcs is that you can modify them after you have created them. So if we go into modify, there's modify arc. So if I click on the arc, modify arc command, I can choose my arc and then I get these nice uh, handles with which I can adjust my arc. So I can change how far around we're going. We've got the B and the E for beginning and end. I can move the center point. I, know I can also change the radius. And there's the flip button. OK, let's come to the match command, a very important command. We're going to match the white curve to the orange curve. The orange curve is the reference. The white curve is the curve we are editing. So we'll go first for position matching. That's G0. You'll see that I've got the blend ticked on the matching dialog. That means that the change is spread out across all control points. Let's go for a curvature join. So you see the fourth control point didn't move, but one, two, and three did for my curvature connection. There is an option called both. Both means that the uh, to achieve the connection, it's going to move both curves in the relationship. Coming on now to the trim command. So trim allows us to say, um, here's the knife. And what are we going to cut with a knife? We're going to cut the bread. So we can pick these two curves and trim them to the, the edge of that patch. We've got a couple of other options. So we've got both. So these to the situation where one curve is crossing another, this will then break both curves at the point of intersection. So you see it split that. And the final one here is object and limit. So if you've got a situation where they don't meet, you can pick one curve and then another, and it will ex extrapolate them both until they do cross over at a single location. Coming on to the offset command now, we get these nice dynamic handles to give us an idea of what we're doing. We can type in a specific number or we can just pick these little handles to define that offset. So we can give a, that specific number and flip it one way or the other. Push OK and generates the curve. We also have this nice option to have a variable offset. So you can again do it dynamically and choose to have that variable offset. Coming now to the curve projection, so projecting a curve onto something. So I'm going to project this curve onto this patch. It's a very uh, useful command here is the direction. So I'm just choosing normal onto a surface. We can also project onto the plane, but press OK and you'll see that it's made up to the order 8. It's fitted very closely, 0 0.03 to the patch. So that's the end of this basic tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Keep an eye out for more.